Okay, so here is the first page. Now on the login database, you guys are going to likely, since you're gonna have multiple clients, you'll you'll create a new database for each client and it's gonna have separate uh, patient databases. So it keeps them separated for, you know, obviously for HIPAA consideration. Okay. And you can set a password for each database, right? So you'll wanna keep those stored somewhere safe. For the purpose of this, mm -hmm. go ahead and click login. Can the password be the same for all of them? Probably, yeah. So the first thing you want to do whenever you get in to start your TM flow tests is you want to go to settings um, and check and make sure everything's paired with the Bluetooth. So go ahead and go down to settings. You want to do this every single time. Uh, and as you can see, two of them have already been paired. Did you guys do that already or? No. no okay. you want yeah. So usually, again, these guys usually... Well, 80% of the times they'll ship it, everything's been paired. Sometimes they ship it, nothing's been paired. And sometimes it's half has been paired. So what we're going to do is we're going to assign the rest of them. Um, it looks like the oximeter has been assigned as well, which is good. And I'll take you, take you through how to do this. It's very simple. Um, so go ahead and grab the uh, gold uh, left ankle cuff. Okay. So in order to pair it, what you'll do is you'll press the button and a zero will come up and then hit the assign button. Uh, next to the corresponding cuff on the uh, interface on the computer. Power button. No, uh, so you're gonna you're gonna hit the, the 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 power button on the cuff just once, so you'll see zeros. Yep. And then you're gonna hit a sign on the computer interface. So you'll just scroll down a little bit and hit uh, right there. Yeah. And so what it's gonna do is it's gonna look for it. Since this is gonna be the first time, it's it's likely gonna have to pair to the computer first too, unless they paired it to the computer already. Okay, so now go to the bottom right of the screen and you'll see add a device, click on that and then hit allow. Okay, it says connection succeeded, hit close, close out of the screen above. Okay, and see now it's green and it's paired. Yep. Um, one deal. thing that I just noticed is that uh, the right arm cuff has the same, oh no, it doesn't. It looks like it almost has the same serial number. You all, you want them to all have different serial numbers because sometimes they'll pair to, to the one, one cuff will pair to two ports, right? But it's, it's a slightly different number by one digit. So, okay. So let's do the green one next too. So grab the green one, hit the, hit the on button to where it says zero and then hit a sign. Yeah. And I'll show you once we're, once it's all been set up, I'll show you what it's supposed to look like. Allow, close, and then close out. Okay, and then let's do the uh, large arm cuff. So go ahead and turn that one on. There's like an on and off switch. With the blue button? No, there's like a switch on the side. Oh, um, yep. And then hit the blue button and then hit a sign. You'll see a little Bluetooth um, icon. Okay, add device in the bottom corner. I can't think it's so big. Allow, Super close. Okay, before you close this out, don't close it out yet. Scroll down and you'll see them here. So you'll, you're you gonna know if they've been paired to the computer already. So you're never gonna have to pair them to the computer again, unless you're doing some sort of tech support that where you need to unpair to the computer then repair. But you'll see that you have all of the cuffs here. They're saying not connected, but they're connected. And then the PC60NW is the pulse oximeter, which they've already paired. Okay, great. Now looking at this, Everything's green, including the pulse oximeter. That's what you always want it to look like. Okay. Now, one other thing that you need to do before you run a, a report is you want to put in, you're going to have to have the physician's uh, information. So what I would do is for this sample, I would just put your company information here. And then that's, this will be like your default setting. And then whenever you do a new profile, you'll do one for each physician, but you'll always need to fill that out. Is that something that will come up like as a drop down, or you have to put it in each time? In settings. Well, what'll happen is when you go set up a new profile, um, I believe that you'll you'll be this this won't have it in there. And then when you go to run a report, it'll prompt you to input the physician name because yeah. they, they they have to have some sort of doctor attached to it. Do you have to put all this information, address, phone um, number? I I don't know what exactly. I think maybe just the name and auto sign. I think those are the the main things. So click auto sign. Okay, and then let's just try here. Um, hit save and exit. Okay, so let's just try. Um, if we have worst case scenario, when after we run the, the the test, we'll go back to it. 
So now, did you guys, do you guys have a, an examination table there or, or we'll just do it on a seat? We were going to do it on a seat. Okay, no problem. Normally, you're going to have someone lay down. Okay, so the, the, the results, let's just not count these results as like super accurate. So if they come out weird, don't freak out. We normally going. have to be laying down. Yeah, for the heart rate variability. Yeah, because what you want to do is you really want to catch the like your base baseline uh, at complete rest. You know, it's you know, it's funny, Tom, is that Pulse yeah, Pulse advertises it as sitting down. Yeah, you I mean, you know what? Who knows? Right. Let's just see. Yeah. Um, add, a, add a new patient. All right. And you just need to put first and last date of birth and the gender. That's all you need to put to get through this this screen. So that's all I would like really do if I were if you if I'm on if I'm on site. You don't want to get stuck in the cumbersome, um, you know, activity of of putting in all this other stuff. So go ahead. Uh, and go. What about the report though? At the end, is it going to come up if I put the address of the patient and I put like their email? Is that going to show up on the report? No. So well, what he's, saying not to, he's saying not to put that in. Well, no, what I'm asking you, say a client wants to know the patient's address on there sometimes, or they want, like, what's going to show up on the report from this patient information when I do add new patient? Just so the first date of birth and the first and last name and their gender? Yeah, yeah. That's it, basic information. Mm -hmm. There's another screen that you'll see. Okay. Um. So these are the contraindications right here. So if the, if the answer is yes to any of these, then you can't move forward. So I would definitely um, get a copy of these over to your physicians and just let them know ahead of time. That way they don't. This is one of the, uh, this is one of the questions that doctor had that you sent yeah. it over. To me. And I think I sent you guys an image of this. You did because the uh, patient that she was thinking of uh, has a pacemaker. Pacemaker. Yeah. Cause the reason for that is they're, they're sending uh, a small electrical pulse through the patient's feet. So they don't want any sort of. Um, so no to all of these for now. I mean, whoever you're doing, I mean, you got to ask the questions. <laughs> don't have any pacemakers. It's uh, probably no. Two more limbs. Although we did this, we did a demo at a at a conference uh, last month, and this lady was like super healthy, and her shit came up all messed up, and I was like <laughs> embarrassed. I was like, it's probably <laughs> wrong when I get to her, and then she's like, no, I did it again, and like she has like. Like she needs to go to the doctor bad. Uh, bilateral mastectomy. Yeah. Is it because of the removal of lymph nodes or is that because there's no breast tissue? That's a good question. I don't know the answer to that. And does does bilateral breast implants have anything, any contraindication? Mm -hmm. Just mastectomy. I can ask Dr. Merrick about that. That's a good question. All right. So hit OK. And I'll take you through this screen. So again, on this screen, for, for the purposes of, of, of moving forward, all you need is height, weight, and daily exercise activity. Um, so go ahead and put those in, and then I'll take you through the rest of the screen, which is uh, actually really good information on here. Wait. 140. It's all the Height and weight, that's it, you said? Oh, and acti uh, daily activity level. Activity, very light, moderate two to four hours of exercise a week, or athlete, are you a competitor? <laughs> <laughs> I picked the one in between. In between these two? Yeah. Moderate is good. Yeah. I know. There, there, there should be one in between those two because that's like... Two to four hours a day. Two to four hours a week versus two to four hours a day. Like, is, there's there's people in between. Um, be in I'm in between. Big disconnect. Yeah. There should be like one hour a day. or right, One hour a day. day. All right. All right. Just fit into moderate. Think... Let's go. <laughs> okay. So Just now... You know, I'm a little active, more active than that. Yeah. Same here. Um, so now we got, uh, you can put your blood test stuff in here. Uh, the other thing that you can put in here are the symptoms and these correlate to ICD 10 codes, but the, the, this software in its current form will not correlate those. Right. So, um, you're going to do that in peace instead of in here. Um, but okay. you can, you can always put the patient's symptoms in here. Okay. Do you have any symptoms today? Are you presenting with any symptoms? Maybe I have a little headache. A little I'm headache. Sure. Dizziness? Yeah. No, dizziness. It's not letting me select. Well, you got to click. You got to click that. Oh, got it. First. Yeah. Maybe some alcoholism. <laughs> type one, type two, the you know. And then uh, you said put in your own symptoms down at the bottom if you click one of those. So, yeah, that's what I was going to ask. So, you, yeah. if we wanted to put the ICD 10 codes down there, 
We're not even given, or we're not yeah, going to use You can do that. You can type those in right down there. We're using a different software for that. Yeah. Continue. But you can type whatever you want down there. All right. Yeah. Okay, continue. go ahead and hit continue. Yes, okay. So you, okay, so and it's muted, so that's fine. Normally what this does is it starts telling you, it's going to, it has a voice. And so it starts telling you what to yeah, do. Is that a volume up? Right. Should I put the volume up? No, I'm just going to talk you through it. Okay. Uh, but when you guys run again after this, just listen to it. You'll hear it. And and the, the moral of what I'm trying to say is this thing is like, it's pretty simple, but it's, there's some cumbersome parts and what makes it stressful at all at, at any time is if you have a patient there and it's not acting like what you predict or what you're expecting, and then you don't know what to do. Right. Um, but if you can overcome that, and the reason why I say this is because for the first year I did this, I literally still have PTSD on some of these parts because like I'd be sitting there doing demos and the shit would just crap out. What what, what you always want to do is you always want to just read, look at the diagram and listen to what the computer is telling you to do and, and you'll be able to, to work your way through it. But the thing is, there's very, very um, small details like on this diagram that are important. Like if you notice where the blue arrows are for the cuffs, the orientation of where they're placed on the arms and the legs, pads on the bottom of the feet and the, the cables that attach to those pads, things like that, right? So the this dialog box on the left-hand side is the patient set under where it says patient setup step one. This is where you're going to select the type of patient that you're dealing with. I'd say 85 to 90% of your patients is just going to be normal. But if they're missing a limb, you can select what they're missing, Okay. If you're using the large arm cuff, you can click on large arm cuff. Go ahead and do that first. And you'll see the diagra diagram changes. You don't use the arm cuffs, then you just use that one large arm cuff. And so you go back to, you can go back to um, regular. And then if you wanted to just do the ABI instead of the complete test, you'll just click on lower extremity exam. Okay. So that is no oximeter. That's no oximeter. Um, well, actually, you know what? It's just not going to do A and S. It'll do pseudomotor and ABI. Why would you do that and not do the complete? So some doctors can't bill for ANS, yeah. like podiatrists. I think it's kind of kind of shitty not to do it, but okay. So the next thing we're gonna do is let's get the patient set up. So go ahead and put the cuffs <laughs> on her arms and legs. Uh, you uh, you'll need to take your shoes and socks off. Um, does the does your arm have to be exposed, or can it go over your it's shirt? Just like normal blood pressure. So I get that question a lot. It just depends. Like doctors will do it over the arm. Um, so, uh, uh, right, right on. No, that's gonna be for the feet. For the feet. Right. How do they go? Does it matter? Uh, look, yeah. at, look at the screen. Yeah, look at the different. diagram, guys. Yeah, remember. Can't see that. Right. Right. Question, look Red at the screen. I want you to get in the, the habit of that. Red and green is on the left. And then the black and yellow. Oh, so they get separated? They get right. separated. Oh, no. yeah, you can pull them apart yeah. a little bit. And okay. then it makes it easier if you attach them to the to the um, pads before you put them on the feet. So they, they both get separated. Yeah. Yep. So what should we do first? Should we hook up the arms first or the... I do arms first because you can't put those over the over the feet. Start test in the middle where it says oximeter and GSR device testing. Right up here. So one thing you might want to do, you can you can do the, the pads on your on your hand as a test, right? So maybe um, just as a precaution um, until this thing's like everybody's comfortable with it. Test this right when you guys get there to, to your appointment and just, just test the, the GSR on your hands. Mm -hmm. um, that way you don't get stuck in the situation that we were just in because that can be embarrassing. Like my heart's already beating from my PTSD. <laughs> so does it do one part at a time? Like first it does the feet, then it does the arms, then it does the legs. Yeah, you're going to see. You're going to okay. see all that. You'll see. We're, 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 like, we're like 10 minutes away from being finished. All the setup's the, the hardest part. All right, so go back to, um, you're already selected. This is actually good for training. So on the left-hand side, you have Kelly Sandoval selected. So okay. all you need to do is add a new measurement down here in the middle next to add new patient. Okay, and hit yes. All right, hit okay, hit continue. Okay, now hit continue, bottom right. All right, here we go. So now it's taking a baseline measurement and it's uh, checking all the devices. So you can see that the blood pressure cuffs are paired, both pads are working and the pulse oximeter is working. So now, now you know we're, we're home free. Now what it's doing is it's taking a measurement of the um, pseudomotor 
while it's taking a baseline heart rate and a uh, photoplasmography measurement. The photoplasmography is taking uh, a blood oxygen content and pulse. And on the right-hand side, they're testing the small nerve fibers, the C fibers, as well as uh, the microcirculation of the feet. And as you can see, it gives a timer at the bottom. So this part takes about a minute and a half. So as you can see, like, especially starting out, I would not um, schedule more than two patients per hour. And I would go probably a good 15 minutes to 30 minutes early for the first few appointments and just make sure you've, you've tested everything. And, you know, on your first day, let me know ahead of time. That way I can be like a lifeline for you, like on the phone. Okay. So here's what happens next. Now we're going to run the ABI portion and if you run it twice. Okay. You're going to do three cuffs the first time and three cuffs the second time, both times it runs the, the, the lower legs or the legs, the lower cuffs. So what you're going to do is you're going to press the on button for the black, gold, and green, and then you're going to hit the OK button. And you want to do it fairly quickly because those the Bluetooth will time out. So Black, gold, and green. Yeah. Yep. And then hit OK. And see, you can see it's searching. It's connected. And she's going to feel the blood pressure cuffs on three of her limbs. OK. Next one. She's going to uh, do the same thing. Only you're going to do the gray, gold, and green, and then you're going to hit continue. Oh, 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 before you do it, before you do it, we need to rotate the leg cuffs. So look at the diagram. Rotate the leg cuffs a little bit to where you've got uh, uh, the blue arrows paste, uh, pointed towards the medial malleolus, which is her ankles. La medial or lateral? Medial. Mm -hmm. And then uh, turn on gold, green, and gray and hit continue. So I would... Um, Maybe just make it so that patients have to be short sleeve. Yeah. I mean, it'll, it'll add an extra probably five minutes to each test. But again, if you only schedule two per hour, you'll, you'll still be able to hit. Okay. Hit okay right here. Don't worry about it. I'm going to tell you what to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the Valsalva maneuver. All right. Do you have the manometer? There we go. And is there a mouthpiece? All right. Go ahead and do that. No, the patient was laying down. Now she's sitting up, so she's fine. She doesn't have to move. So that thing's a mechanical device. It has no electronics. It doesn't mean anything. Now, if you don't have it, the patient can just blow on her thumb, okay? So it's like it's kind of like highly technical for something you don't really need it to be. So essentially, the goal of this is to get her heart rate up without her running around, right? So okay. she's going to blow on that, and that's going to create pressure in her chest, and she's going to get her heart rate up. And so basically you want to hold it for, she's going to blow to 40 millimeters HG and you're going to hit start test. And she's going to need to maintain that for 15 seconds. Hold her breath for 15 seconds. No, she's going to blow for 15 seconds. Don't, oh. don't tell her to start until after you've hit click start. Cause there's about a two second lag and it can be taxing on the patient. So go ahead and click start. And then you'll see it'll count 15 for her. And then go ahead and start blowing now. And you'll count for the patient, but the, also the, the machine will beep too. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, Okay, relax. <laughs> yeah. So like on older patients, that's kind of a hard thing to do. So just if if they give you a little bit of pushback, just, just tell them to do their best. The, the, the whole goal is just to get their heart rate up. And this is the ANS portion. Okay, so you're going to do like three challenges. And those are going to count towards the, the billing code. That way it's 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 met the criteria. So the next one is going to be a deep breathing exercise. So you can go ahead and hit start and she's going to breathe in for five seconds and out for five seconds. And you can watch the screen. It'll tell you how to exactly. And again, there's a little bit of delay. So one inhale, two, three, four, five, exhale. Yeah. And you'll do that for 60 seconds. All right. Now, now you're going to take the, the um, pads off her feet. And then you can just stick them together or stick them on the plastic. Don't worry about even uh, unplugging the, the cables. The yet. If we do it again on me, we can use them again. Yeah. And then take take the, uh, the you actually don't even have to take off anything else. Just have her have her stand up and hit hit start, but don't hit start until she stands up. Okay, stand up for me. Leave this Kathy? on too, right? Yeah, yep. leave it on, hit start first, or hit start. Because you want to catch that. You want to catch that. I'll hit it quick, bro. Change in posture, yeah. So next time, just just hit start first, and then have her stand up. 
And then what you're going to do, this is just going to run for about a minute. And then we're going to take your blood pressure one more time. 30 minutes. 30. Schedule it, Mike? Yeah. 30 minutes. Yeah, don't do 20. No, 30. Do 30. If it's just at first. Once you get it popping, then you could probably do 20. But I'll yeah. And if you're doing 20, you're going to need an MA because they'll have to get them dressed. So patient is usually gowned up? Uh, no. This is like, no. No, they don't need to be. What do you mean patient's going to have to get them dressed? The shoes and socks. Oh. Okay. Hit hit the the white button on the on the black cuff and hit OK. White button on the black cuff? This one? On her left arm, yeah. Okay, sweet. All right, now you can take everything off of her. She's done. We'll talk through the... Uh, I already the have everything on. Do it on me Should again. we do it again? Uh, well, why don't we talk through the, the report? Okay. Yeah. yeah. So what happens with the breathing part for the minute if, let's say, they're they're doing it, you know, like three seconds or... It's not a big deal. Like, you, you just want to get them to do deep breathing, right? For a whole minute. For it doesn't have minute. to be five seconds. No. I mean, it, it's it's there as a guide. Okay. Yeah. Like like all of the breathing exercises, like <laughs> here's here's the concept. They're taking a baseline laying down. That's number one measurement. They're taking a measurement with the heart rate elevated. That's two measurements. They're taking a deep breathing exercise. That's three measurement. And then they're taking a measurement after you stand up, a postural change. That's the fourth measurement. That's how they're able to, to meet the criteria. And that's how they're testing the heart rate variability. So they're testing the way that the, the body reacts when the heart rate changes each time. And that's how you're able to, to diagnose autonomic dysfunction. And so just like when you do like each EKG, the patient can't talk or like... I wouldn't. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's actually the only time that I wouldn't have them talk would be during the ANS portion. I mean, it doesn't matter if they talk while they're getting the blood pressure taken or the pseudomotor. Okay. Right. And they're not able to talk if they're deep, deep breathing and all that anyway. Right. So the only time they wouldn't talk is when they stand up. Let's go through this uh, report because you'll get questions from the doctors. So the way that it's set up, um, you guys have seen the written report. So this is the, the the digital version. So it's a little different, but it's all categorized the same way. On the left-hand side, the cardiometabolic score. Uh, you have autonomic, which is 40%, vascular, which is 40%, and lifestyle, which is 20%. In the middle, you have your overview. It's going to show if there's any like concerns, right? And then on the right-hand side, it gives you some comments. Those are kind of like some interpretation, okay? Now, again, PEACE is an enhanced version of this. If you're not using PEACE, you use this, it's fine, right? The only thing that's missing is, is the matched ICD-10 codes. But everything else, the doctor should be able to get their interpretation done with this. So just so you know, like this is sufficient. Um, so you can go in between the different um, uh, subcategories between overview, ANS, vascular, and lifestyle. So let's go ahead and click on ANS. Hey, Tom, for uh, sales purposes, the overview is good enough, right? To show a doctor what a report might look like? Oh, no. I would send them the reports that, that we have, and I'll show you how to get those. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. So this is showing you the autonomic and pseudomotor, right? So this is the neurological part portion of the patient. Right here on the right-hand side, the, the most important is looking at the sweat gland response and the microcirculatory response. That's, that's a, this right here is like, uh, will, will determine whether the patient has neuropathy, okay? On the left-hand side, uh, you have cardiac autonomic uh, assessment, okay? Um, and it looked like uh, the K30-15 ratio, that's from standing and sitting, um, that's the only thing that came up abnormal here. I, I don't even know why that would be, or if that's even something of concern, but the big thing to look on on this, this report is on the right-hand side and it looks like her, um, her feet are fine. So click over to the vascular. That's the next one. Um, yep. this part here, cardiac function response to standing, is that measured when she stands from sitting? Yep. Yeah, we, and go ahead and click the carrot. So if you have a question, if you click the carrot, it's going to give you more information. We were supposed to hit start before right. I got up. I got up and then we did right. it. So change, that's probably why it's abnormal, right? Change of posture. Most people come up with tachycardia on this. Even it's got probably got a pretty light sensor for that, because I know that I come up with it too. 
vascular right here. So again, the right-hand side is very important. This is the only part that's like critical. Um, if they're having any sort of like lower extremity, if it's in the orange or, or red, then you want to make sure that the doctor knows like ASAP because that, they could be at risk for a stroke because um, that means that they have clogged arteries. Um, but this one's fine. Um, endothelial function on the left-hand side and then your blood pressures on the bottom. Um, now, if you click on lifestyle. You said blood pressures on the bottom where? Yeah, upper large artery. Oh, that the upper large artery is what measures the, the uh, blood pressure? Yeah, that's like your arm blood pressure. The right-hand side is your lower extremities. And the endothelial function, what is that? That's your veins, like the health of your veins. So it's looking at the tone of your of your veins, of your artery right there, and then um, the blood flow. Those are the most complicated measurements, um, like uh, uh, markers, I mean. I have um, videos on the Gateway site, like shorts, like TikTok shorts that you can for each one of those and you can you can look at it and 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 read up on it. But the big thing is the ABI. Like you want to make sure that those are clean. And if they're not, then then escalate that. Lifestyle is is the, the this is the easiest one to communicate with the patients. You have your obviously your fat mass, your BMI, um, your blood oxygen content, your exercise capacity related to heart rate variability. So she's in Excellent shape. Um, it gives you recommendations for diet. It um, was weight. higher than that. <laughs> for diet, for weight plan, um, for uh, exercise, and for suggested supplements. So, so if you guys are dealing with like general practice and wellness doctors, uh, this is a really good portion because they can use it for obesity counseling. They can also use it to communicate the value of the test to the patients. And it also gives the patients like understandable, you know, marching orders or, you know, you know, next steps. Tom, this would be good for if the primary is doing the diabetic uh, management. Absolutely. And, and they go put on the shot. And then, you know, let's say six months, 10 months later, it will obviously show the differences, right? Yeah. How they yeah. did when they first got on the shot, how they did afterwards. Absolutely. Okay. So now let's, let's just talk about how you're going to get your database. So if you go over to the database or not database, but the print button on the right hand side, click on print. This is how you're going to get the report. Okay. So if you hit, okay, it's going to generate the PDF reports that you guys are familiar with. Oh, and here we go. We got to fill out that field. So go ahead and um, hit okay. And go ahead and put in, it looks like you are going to have to put in your clinic name, address, uh, anything that has a little um, required. Okay, don't hit continue yet. So one thing I want to show you, you can customize these reports. So right now we're going to generate a full patient report. But if you wanted to just do the wellness suggestions, I think, Dave, that's what you were kind of referring, referring to. Yeah. That's going to generate a three-page report that, that's something that they would give to the patient. Okay. You can also, if you, if you do multiple times with that patient, you can just generate the trends and it'll just print out a report of like the improvement, like after the weight loss counseling, let's say after like six months or a year. Right. And then you can also um, deselect certain pay pages, right? So if you want to just leave out certain things, you can. Or you can select, select them all. So what I would do is just go ahead and do patient report now and hit continue. And so it's going to generate that in a, in a web browser as a PDF. Oh, maybe it's Adobe. Either way. So you can scroll down here and you'll see the normal report that you're used to. So if you guys scroll down, uh, you'll see uh, a few things that are of note. Um, once you get past the full thing. So there's your markers. Those are all your markers. You scroll down one more, one more page. It gives your interpretation. So if the doctor's like, what do I do with this? You have them read that. Okay. And then scroll down a little bit more. And the next three pages, or four pages are the weights. Yeah. So there's the pages right there. Okay, so go ahead and um, if you wanted to, you can save this. You can print it from here. So I, I would go ahead and set up a directory for each doctor. What do you um, mean? The, the software might actually auto automatically set up a directory for each doctor when uh, you do the different the different uh, profiles. Tom, we could always go back into this yeah. study and look at the report, right, under Kathy's name. Yeah. So so the way you do that is go back to database. So now, if you ever want to look at it, 
you make sure that whatever report that you want to look at, let's look at a different one. Go sample female, just click on that and then go to view patient results. If you click on view patient report, it's going to generate that same report. And you can see, as you can see there, yeah, just hit continue. Oh, wait, no, look, before we do that, let's, let's, let's do the wellness suggestions. Instead of the patient report, click on wellness. Okay, hit continue and watch, you'll see the difference. Uh, wait, go back, hit continue again, see what it says. You cannot print the wellness report or the trends when you select a post-exercise visit. Post-exercise visit means what? I think that just means that the, you can't do a, a wellness report on the on an on an older patient. You don't know while the report has just been while the. Oh test no 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 no! This is a different this is a different report. They only did ABI on this one. Oh, that's one. So, so okay. yeah, so so they they did a sp specific type of report here. That's why the patient results was like that because they had just done a they'd probably done lower lower extremity only. Tom, is there anything specific that has to be done before you end the test? Take home. Before you end the test? Yeah, like on some systems, like you can't make changes once you close out this the test. I'm just wondering, is there anything that comes up where, oh, wait, you put, like, say they put in always a wrong date of birth. Or always put save. Put always save click save. information. So you can go back after the fact and make changes to the patient's name, things like that? Maybe. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. We can try. Let's try it right now. Yeah, we could try. Hey, another question, Tom. Let's say the patient wants this report with them, like they want to leave with it. Yeah. We obviously can print it, but can we also email yeah. it to them? Yeah. Go close it out. You can either email it from there or you can save and email it from here. From here. I mean, or that's that's like you guys here. know how to use that right there. So if you go back to um, view pay wellness report. Okay, now send by email. Now it's not going to have name or date of birth on it. Now try try that. Let's see what it shows up as. Might okay, be, that's what be, I was concerned with. It might be abbreviated. It just generated it. Maybe maybe go back and uh, cuz usually you have to put it in the bottom dialog box, not the top one. Yeah, let's see if you get it cuz I I'm not used to it generating the PDF, but a good workaround here is just you can email it from here. Just hit the email button from here and you can send it straight from here. You'll know that's going to mm -hmm. do. We should all do it. I'd like to do it on my kids. You got it? Okay. Sweet. Yeah. Oh, you got it. Nice. Mm -hmm. Thank you.